All right, here's their, their chickens. They, they survived their first night out here in their chicken coop. Seem like they're all doing really good. Now what? Here is Je uh, Jesse. And there's Paul. Say hi, Paul. Hello. Hi, Jesse. Hey. Now, what kind of chickens are these, Jess? These are Rhode Island Reds. Rhode Island Reds. I heard that. Good deal. It seems like they survived the first night. Paul, is this your chore to take care of them, ain't it? Yes, I water and feed them. Water and feed them. But they did. They survived the first night. I think they're going to be all right. I was actually kind of, I was afraid it was kind of chilly last night, but I came out here later that night and they was all cooped up in that corner, just huddled up sleeping. Everything was good. I came out this morning, they were still, they, they had jumped down and I got, oh, there they go. They're walking up the ramp. Yeah, they, they did that one up We get to see them walk all the way up to the ramp and that one is almost, that was made it's, 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 thinking about it and I right, found some grass up there so you know uh, here it comes it's coming back down now but they have been using it a little bit going up there we're, we're going to help them out we're going to take them up there tonight when it gets late and there he goes he's in it he jumped in by himself but the rest that can't get up there, we're going to help them up there tonight. Alright, Paul, walk us over here to the rabbits. You rabbits y'all got out here. Mm -hmm. yeah, what the now, somebody told us about putting, that you could use an old tree trunk that would have like just a stump of it for compost. That it would help. So we actually went and got it and tore it up and threw it over a little section of the garden. We're going to till this up tomorrow and till it in the ground maybe it'd help it out some like i said it's mostly just dry we're just trying to do what we can see what we can do yeah we put it in this corner right here and just in this corner separately so we can see how good this corner does compared to this side right here yeah anything that we add to it we're just been trying to put it over here on like, kind of on the side so we can tell the difference on what we grow how it's going to do but next year we expect a whole lot better this year right, we're just giving a test for it. Yep, just giving it a test. See how it does. Mm -hmm. We're going to till it in tomorrow. And here's the footage, right? And then you got over here. Right? And here's our rabbits that we've got. This is a Flemish giant rabbit. It's a female. Now it is two months old. And as you can see, it's not, they're a pretty, pretty big rabbit it, for a two month old rabbit pretty big and this in here is a I'm not sure what kind it is it's a black doe it's a female we it, it is four months old and as you can see there's not much difference in the size of them this black one probably won't get no bigger but these Flemish Giants get up to 15 20 plus pounds as you can see this cage is perfect for it as of right now but when it gets bigger is it going to make it? Is it? This is a two by two cage for them each. And I just don't think it's going to hold a Flemish rabbit. That's why the name of this video is five things to consider before buying a giant Flemish rabbit. Because I'm pretty sure in time, we're going to have to get a bigger cage for these rabbits. What do you think, Jess? Yeah. Maybe like a three by two at the smallest. Three by two at the smallest. Three by right. three might be pretty good for a full grown mm -hmm. Flemish giant. Yeah, for a couple of them too. But yeah, that's one thing you gotta think about. And then two, I have already been out here and fed this this rabbit here probably about twice already. And it's already, he's needing some water already. She is needing some water. We gave her some food. This one has still got its same food that we gave it this morning and same water. So you can tell that it's going to eat, that the Flemish is going to eat more, it's going to drink more than the normal rabbit. All right, Jess, come over and show us what you've been, y'all been working on a little bit, piddling with in here, in the garage area. Hmm. Getting a little chilly outside. 
Yeah, we've been enjoying this weather, ain't we, Paul? The last couple of days have been great. Yeah. Sun shining. We've been able to, you know, we've been able to come outside and work a little bit. Yeah, we've been been getting it. We've been going up in these mountains and, and hunting. We got turkey season coming next oh, yeah. next week. And we're hoping to kill us a turkey. They've been wanting to hunt. And here's the cage they, they've been working on here a little bit. And what size is this, Jesse? It's three foot wide. It's a three foot long. Well, how long is it all together? Three by three foot? Yeah. By eight? Eight, by eight foot. foot. Okay, now them is probably a good size for a Flemish rabbit. Three by two, like this is going right here, is two foot. So it's going to be three foot wide. Two foot. Two or two foot wide. Three foot. And. So we're hoping to put us a cage here, the cage there on the end, and then right here, a cage right here in the middle <clears throat> for the mama rabbit, because we're going to try to breed them. We want to breed her Flemish rabbits and uh, everything. But here's some five things you need to think of. One thing, Jess, that me and you, was, that me and you noticed was that, come out over here a little bit more closer. You both to come over next to Paul. Y'all get together. Yeah. Now, one of the first things that we, know, that we discussed was them Flemish rabbits get 15 to 20 plus pounds, right? Yeah. Now, and then the average breed is how many, how many pounds? Five plus? Yeah, five plus. Five plus pounds. So that's one thing to consider is your Flemish rabbits is going to be way bigger than an average rabbit. And that's another thing to think about too is number two is on the list. A bigger rabbit equals a bigger cage so that two by two is not going to hold that flemish uh female rabbit too much longer it might for a little while but pretty soon we're going to have to take her and put it in this new cage you know if i had knew that already to, at the get-go we would have already done that we would have made a bigger cage but we've already got that one so we're going to use it for when they're young put them in that but when they get bigger we're going to transfer them into this bigger cage that we're making and if y'all want to us to make a video of showing you how to make this cage, how we've got it set up. Uh, just let us know and we'll definitely help you. Um, but yeah, another thing to think of is uh, like how we said, you know, three by two is the smallest, three by three is great. But you know, if you've got, you got no room, much room, a three by two, I believe would do fine. The number three thing that you need to think of is eating, like how we discussed. Now tell us, Jesse, what you, what you were talking about that. The difference from a Flemish giant eating to a regular. To regular. Well, the Flemish giant eats twice as much as the regular rabbit. Yeah. The a regular rabbit can eat about one cup, a little bit of water a day, as the Flemish giant would eat a cup in the morning and a cup at in evening, midnight area. Yeah. That, two cups of water. Yeah, you have to come up. You have to keep an eye on them a lot, kind of feed them and everything. But they'll eat twice as much as a regular rabbit. So that's another thing to think of if you're thinking about buying one of the Flemish giants. Now, another thing is, is I would think of for a Flemish giant number four, is you need to think of what are, what is your goals with these rabbits? Are you wanting to breed to sell or are you wanting it for as a pet? Uh, breed to harvest them, you know, to, to fix them, to eat? Uh, you know, what's your goal for them? Or maybe both, to breed and to harvest them. Uh, you definitely need to think that, uh, you know, have a plan of the future. What is your goals with them? Uh, number five, another thing to think about, though, with these Flemish, if you're thinking about harvesting them for food, is one thing, what was about their, what was uh, some of the things, Jess, that you was telling me about, like with the, the weight, the difference between them? Yeah, even though the Flemish giant must, uh, is 15, 20 pounds plus, Maybe five to ten pounds of that could be the bones. Yeah, they have a massive bone a bone mass that uh, is a whole lot bigger than an average rabbit. So yeah, there might be 15, 20 plus pounds, but the majority of that is going to be in um, bone mass. Uh, so now, but so to me, if you're thinking of a meat rabbit, to me the best meat rabbit would be like a New Zealand white. They're easy to feed, don't take that much. You're gonna get the same amount of meat from a New Zealand white as you would 
Flemish, a Flemish giant. giant. So, I mean, that's the thing to think of if you're using them for that purpose. Because uh, I know a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people talk about, especially during this pandemic, and people going crazy, the shelves are empty at the store. People are getting into the homesteading more, more into gardening, more into their own animals. And one thing I found out with uh, the Flemish rabbits, or actually with any rabbit, people's thinking, well, if I can just go get a rabbit and let them breed and I'll always have food. But now the thing to think of is, it doesn't matter if you're surrounded by rabbits in a pandemic and you're, you can still die from rabbit starvation. It's an actually such a thing that rabbit meat is just lean meat. And if you try to survive on that, you'll die of malnutrition. Deficient, deficiency in fat, what you call it. Mm -hmm. So, rabbit meat is good, but you need to have something secondary, you know, like chickens, uh, anything like that. Something to add to your diet besides just lean meat from a rabbit. Because it won't give you what you need. But, uh, those are some of the five things that we could think of that you need to think about if you're purchasing a Flemish Giant. If there's anything else that y'all think that we missed, definitely let us know. And like I said, if y'all have any ideas about a cage or like to want ideas about this one, how they build it, just let us know. Definitely give us a like and, a, and subscribe. They are new, new to homesteading. They've been doing this themselves, caging, uh, gardening, and everything. And we'll see how they do with it. But definitely give them a like and subscribe. They came up with their own name that they call themselves. And what is that, Paul? Napier's Homestead Farm. There we go.